Hey mama, birth usually is accompanied by many questions and you're not the only one asking them. And as you have them answered, the more confident you can be about your birth experience. In this video, you get answers to three commonly asked questions that you asked me about epidurals and their effect on the length of labor, as well as peeing during labor and fundal massages. I'm Bridget and I'm a childbirth educator and birth doula and it's my joy and passion to help mamas understand that they are built to birth so that they can love their birth experiences. If you're new to our YouTube community, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss any of your empowering videos about pregnancy, birth, and postpartum in the future. The more you know, mama, the more confident you can approach your labor, birth, and postpartum period. So let's answer a few of those questions to have a more empowering, positive, and confident birth. So epidurals are just one of the many comfort measure options available during labor, but it is very powerful. Anything that can take away the powerful sensations of labor that bring your baby from your womb into your arms has to be very powerful as well. Epidurals are made up of a concoction of a type of local anesthetic called lidocaine or bupivacaine and an opioid, usually fentanyl. This medication is continuously administered into mama's body by using a catheter that is placed right by the spine that eliminates or significantly numbs labor sensations from the belly down. So the commonly asked question that mamas ask is, do epidurals make labor longer? And the answer is, Oftentimes, yes. In one study done in 2012, in order to keep labor progressing by one centimeter of dilation per hour after an epidural was given, synthetic oxytocin, often called Pitocin, had to be administered in order to keep labor pro progressing in the same time frame of a woman without epidural analgesia. The reason for needing Pitocin to augment labor or help it keep going was because after the epidural, the uterus slowed or completely stopped contracting or the contractions or surges were too weak and infrequent, making them ineffective at progressing labor. Now, needing Pitocin to augment labor after mama has gotten an epidural doesn't usually affect mama in regards to how she is feeling her surges because she's usually pretty or completely numb. However, Pitocin can cause the surges to become too frequent and strong, potentially causing uterine hyperstimulation that can cause baby to not get enough oxygen being sent to them and putting them in into distress, which I know no one wants. If an epidural is something you feel is necessary for labor, it's usually best to get it when you are in active labor and it is well established, after you are six centimeters dilated. And the reason for that is because it's less likely that labor will stall once it is more established. Epidurals are also linked to longer second stages of labor when mama is pushing. In one study done in California with 42,000 births, women without an epidural gave birth on average in about 47 minutes or more, and women with an epidural gave birth in two hours or more. Now, we also know that longer time spent in the second stage of labor where mama is pushing is more likely to result in baby being deprived of oxygen, complications with baby that result in them being admitted into the NICU, postpartum hemorrhaging, and more severe tearing for mama. Now, again, if an epidural becomes necessary, frequent position changes during the first stage of labor as well as the pushing stage will help with labor progress. Although it might be tricky to find labor in pushing positions with an epidural, it's definitely doable. Laying on your side during pushing is an option instead of lying flat on your back or even being on all fours is a possibility if you have enough feeling in your legs to support you with the help of your support team to get you into that position. And it's a great way to birth your baby to keep them moving down and out more quickly and effectively. So yes, while epidural certainly can slow down labor, there are things that you can do to help keep things progressing and frequent position changes, even if it's just from lying on your left side and then turning over to your right, putting a peanut ball between your legs to help open up your pelvis or sitting upright will help you do that. I have an online childbirth education course coming out so soon or might already be out depending on when you're watching this video that you can access on my website, builttobirth.com which I have linked down in the description below. And it talks about so, so, so many positions that you can utilize in labor to assist labor progress. So head over there to either sign up for updates using your email on when the course will be released or go ahead and take the Built to Birth course to have a healthier, happier, and easier birth, which you can access for 
uh, from my website down in the description below. The second question we're going to answer is why is peeing during labor important? During pregnancy, you probably can feel the pressure of your growing uterus on your bladder that causes you to use the bathroom far more frequently than you did pre-pregnancy. Your bladder sits almost right beneath your uterus and when it's full in labor from all the fluid that you're drinking because staying hydrated is so, so important, it can make it more difficult for baby to move down and out, whereas an empty bladder provides more space for baby to pass through the birth canal. A full bladder can also make labor contractions less efficient, causing labor to be longer as well. This is especially true in early labor, not so much once active labor has been established, because by then a full bladder doesn't necessarily affect labor surges or the length too much. If labor seems to be stalling when mama surges are still frequent and strong, but dilation isn't happening, common advice from nurses, midwives, doctors, doulas, and from me is to try to go to the bathroom to see if it helps with labor progress. And oftentimes it does, especially if mama hasn't been to the bathroom in a while. Going pee in labor also encourages women to labor on the toilet, which is a great way to labor because it allows the pelvic floor, which baby has to pass through, to relax, which can really encourage dilation and baby's descent. Laboring backwards on the toilet can be a great way to go pee and find relaxation during labor because it allows you to be upright, leaning forward by resting your arms and head on the tank or the wall in front of you, and then is using gravity to bring baby down and out. I talk more about these three key factors, what I call BLT for finding positions in labor in this video that I'm linking up here. Because an empty bladder can be beneficial in labor, many mamas will ask their birth team members or will write it in their birth plan to be reminded to use the restroom before the pushing stage of labor. So if this is something that you want to try doing in labor, I encourage you to have someone remind you by telling them before labor begins that that is your job to remind me to go pee before you start pushing or just write it in your birth plan for your medical team to see and hopefully they will follow through on that. The last question that I want to answer is what are fundal massages and should I be worried about them? Fundal, also known as the uterine massages are given after the birth of your baby and then before as well as after the placenta is born as well. The reason why fundal massages are given after birth is to help prevent excessive blood loss or postpartum hemorrhage for mama. When uterine massages are given, the loss of blood at 30 minutes and 60 minutes is less than the amount that women who don't get the uterine massages and reduces the need for prostaglandins and pitocin to shrink down the uterus to its pre-pregnancy size and reduce postpartum bleeding. Funnel massages are non-invasive. All that's done is a nurse, doctor, or midwife will use their hands and massage your tummy. Now, although they aren't invasive, they also aren't very comfortable. Like most people think of when they hear the word massage, you think, oh, that's relaxing, but funnel massages aren't so much relaxing. After labor, the uterus is pretty sore and fatigued, just like your calf muscles would likely be after running a marathon. And then imagine someone massaging those sore leg muscles. It's not going to be super comfortable. Your uterus is going to feel the same way, which is why this massage is going to be sort of uncomfortable. But as long as you can continue breathing through them like you have your surges with the de-stressor breath, which I teach you how to do in this YouTube video that I've linked up here, that you definitely must check out if you haven't yet to have a more relaxing and effective labor, your uterine massage will be much more tolerable and is nothing to be worried about. Your medical care team will do the funnel massage just a few times immediately after labor and then we'll teach you how to do it or we'll come in and do it every one or couple of hours when you are in your postpartum room. While they are uncomfortable, they can keep you healthier and safer and are nothing to be scared or worried about, Mama. Well, Mama, I hope that answers some questions that you have about labor and birth so that you can have a more informed, empowered, and productive labor. If you have more questions, like you probably do, comment them down below in the comment section so I can make more videos like this one that answers your questions. So thanks for being with me in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Mamas.